Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. In this next lesson, we're going to be discussing how to use the effects, sky, and portrait tabs inside of On One Photo Raw 2022. Now, before I jump into the effects tab, I just wanna show you real quick how you can retouch your image to remove any blemishes in the sky or also if you need to remove blemishes and imperfections from skin. So we can see in here, if I zoom in, that we have a couple of dust spots in the sky. An easy way to remove these dust spots is to head over here to our tool well. Let's select our retouch tools and let's head up here and let's make sure that this spot healing brush is selected. And with the spot healing brush, we can paint over the blemishes that we want to remove. That will provide us with a neighboring region near it that we can cover the blemishes up with. We can also modify that neighboring region just by grabbing this handle and dragging it around. And we can modify the cover up by dragging this handle around. So that's just a fast way that you can clean up different blemishes in your scene before you start getting creative with the styling. So I'm just gonna hit Z on my keyboard to commit to those retouch changes. Now let's head over here to the right side of our screen and just real quickly, let's use our develop tab and let's use that handy AI auto button to set the basic foundational look of our shot. Perfect. Now let's head into the effects tab and we can start getting creative with these different filters. Inside of effects, I first need to select add filter and this will pull up the filter menu with all of the different filters that I can choose from. To view what a filter does, just hover over it. It will give you a description of that filter and also a photo with that filter in action. Each filter also has a set of keywords you can use to search for them. For example, with this borders filter, the keywords are border, contact, creative edges, film, frame, and Polaroid. So if I want a filter that deals with the detail in my image, I can search for detail, and this will pull up all of the filters that are associated with applying detail to my image. So I wanna apply a bit of detail into this photograph. I'll choose this dynamic contrast filter, which is a very popular filter for adding in detail. And with any of the filters that you apply to your image, once you apply that filter onto your image, it's automatically going to give your image a look. You can view that look off and on by disabling the filter and enabling it. Each filter has its own set of preset looks at the top that you can choose from. Or you can use this more menu to look for different ones. When you've chosen a preset or you've added a filter, you can modify any of these settings by adjusting the sliders. If you've modified these settings and you want to reset them, head up here to this arrow and select it. If you want to save these settings as a preset, Go back into that more menu and go down to save new style. Now you can access that preset whenever you apply this filter to your image. When it comes to filters, you can apply and stack as many filters on your image as you want. Once you've added on different filters into the effects tab here, you can also use this area below the effects tab to modify the look of all of these filters. So if you don't want these effects to be as strong on your image, you can lower the opacity for your effects tab here. You can also reset the entire effects tab with this arrow here. When it comes to each filter, you can modify the opacity of each individual filter 
with their opacity slider. To remove a filter from your image, just select the X option and it will remove it from the Effects tab. Another way that you can add on filters to your image is by opening up the preset drawer inside Photo Raw 2022. Simply select this icon here, and this will pull up your preset drawer with a bunch of preloaded presets that will stylize your image. Let's use one of these black and white film ones. Once I select a preset here, once I select a preset, it will populate the effects tab with the corresponding filters that create this look. I can also use this fade slider in the preset area to lower the opacity of all of those filters. Just like the opacity slider over here. I can also modify any of those filters inside this preset to make sure they look the way I want them to. If I like this look better than the original one, I can create my own preset by selecting this option here. And I can add it into any of these different presets that are already there. Or I can create my own category of presets. To start adding in different presets to. When it comes to saving your presets, make sure that whatever modifiers you have enabled, you want to be added into the preset. If you don't want the develop modifiers to be added into this black and white preset, make sure that this develop option is disabled. You can also open up these different modifiers and ensure that other options are enabled as well. So now if I head back over here to my preset drawer, I can go back and I can scroll down here and I have my black and white category right there with this black and white preset. Now let's say I'm using this preset, my black and white preset, and I add on a filter to it that I think makes it look better. I can update this preset with those current settings by right clicking that preset and choosing Update preset with current settings. Now I can choose which settings in here I want to update the preset with. I can also insert presets directly into the look that I've already created. So if I go back here to the presets, let's head up here to the cinematic presets. If I want to insert this cinematic preset into this look I've already created, I can right click and I can select insert preset. This will insert the filters that go along with this preset into this look that I've already made. And the great thing about this is I can always go in here and I can modify any of these filters to remove them or modify the look. And let's just head up here and reset the effects tab so that we can remove all of these filters. And I'll just hide this preset menu and let's just add on a couple filters to style. And then we can replace the sky with the sky tab here. So I'm just going to add a filter. So let's add dynamic contrast. Let's use that surreal option to bring in a bit of detail. Let's make sure everything's natural with the opacity slider. And then I'll add another filter. Let's just add in the color enhancer filter. And with color enhancer, I love this for modifying specific color ranges. I'm going to grab my oranges and yellows and just increase the saturation on those. Just like that. Oops, a little too much there. And then I can lower the opacity for that color enhancer filter, make sure it's not too intense. There we go. So now that we've modified our effects tab, let's head into this sky tab here 
where we can access the all new sky swap AI feature inside of Photo Raw and liven up this sky. So inside of sky swap AI, it's, it works the same as any other filter inside of Photo Raw in that we have presets up here at the top that we can select to quickly modify and replace the sky in our image. We can use the more menu to find more skies or we can find specific skies and import our own skies right here in this area. Inside the category menu, I can choose from different categories. Let's choose sunset. And then I can select a different sky from this sky menu. Once we've selected our sky, we can modify the positioning here with these different sliders. I can use the shift horizon option to shift the horizon of the sky. I can modify the opacity of the sky. I can fade the edge if I need to fade the edge out a bit more. or I can shift the edge up or down. I can also modify the scale of the sky to make it larger. And then I can modify the look of the sky with this appearance section. So if I need to cool down the image or warm the image up, I can modify the temperature of the image. I can modify the brightness, remove any haze if I need to. And I can also add in blurring to make it look like a long exposure. When it comes to the foreground, if you need to modify the lighting in your foreground, you can select this lighting area. This will adjust the brightness of your foreground and will also provide a tint based on the color of your sky. If you want to modify that tint or the distance of the lighting that's being applied, you can do that in this amount slider and with this distance slider. You can also adjust the mode of lighting in case you need to brighten up your foreground or you need to darken it. If you need to modify the color of the tint, you can select a specific tint with this color box or you can use this color dropper to find a specific tint. If there's reflection on the water and you need to match the reflection, you can do that with this reflection option here. So now that we've modified the landscape and replaced the sky there, let's dive into the portrait tab and retouch a portrait. So with this photograph, I'm just going to quickly use that AI auto button just to bring out the basic tonalities of my image. And now I can head into the portrait tab. Whenever you select the portrait tab, it's automatically going to find all of the faces in your portrait for you. It's going to create a mask for them. And then it's going to automatically apply skin retouching to those images based off of how they look. With this image, let's just zoom in here. If I turn this off and on, you can see it's doing a great job of boosting the whites and details in her eyes and also removing some of these imperfections on our skin. But let's go in here and fine tune this just by modifying some of these sliders. When it comes to this retouching slider here underneath the skin option, you can fine tune the details of the retouching with these sliders here. So if I want more blemish removal, I can pull up on the blemishes slider 
If I want to add in a little bit more detail, I can use the detail slider. The smoothing slider will smooth out the blemishes, sort of act like a foundational slider here. And then we have texture and shine. The shine slider will remove any large areas that are bright and seem out of place on the image if there's a bunch of bright light hitting the portrait. What we can modify here is this entire retouching slider to control the opacity of all of these different details. I'm just going to make it quite intense so that we can see what's going on. And I think it's looking really good so far in the skin section. Now let's head down here to the face area. With our face modifiers, we can control the brightness of the face. We can modify the slimness of the face. We can control the size of each eye independently. And in the eyes section, we can modify how the eyes look. With brightness, we can control the exposure of the eyes. We can add in whitening with this whitening slider. We can modify the detail of the eyes with this slider here. We can remove any dark circles underneath their eyes with this slider. And we can enhance and add detail to her eyebrows with this slider. Down in the mouth section, if the portrait is showing teeth, we can whiten those teeth with this slider here. We can then modify the vibrance of the lips, giving them a bit more color. We can modify the brightness of those lips and also the hue of the color on the lips. And just like all of the filters, we can modify the opacity of that filter with this opacity slider. And we can reset settings with the arrow. So that's how to use the effects tab, the sky tab, and the portrait tab to creatively adjust your images inside of Photo Raw. I'll see you in the next lesson.